Theo just put out a video where he built the same app in five different stacks, and one of those stacks was React with a Golang backend with GraphQL connecting them. And I actually wrote that Golang backend, and I wanted to take this video to talk about my opinions on writing the language for the first time in quite a while. I got my start on YouTube making Golang videos. Back in my junior year of college, I was really, really into like the concurrency model, having a ton of fun playing around with it. But over time, I very much fell out of love with it. I've really kind of become a full stack TS guy just for the stuff I'm building. It just makes more sense. But this gave me a really good chance to kind of play with the language again, and I wanted to talk about it. I gotta say, I had a much better experience with it than I thought I would. And while there are plenty of negatives here, I wanted to start with the positives. And the first positive is that, my God, it felt good to be working with a language that did not have all of the random garbage that you have to deal with in JavaScript world. Having a package manager and a formatter and an LSP and all that stuff that just works right out of the box and a build system, that's a big one, not having to deal with random TypeScript build crap. I have been doing a ton of React Native projects lately and it is a nightmare to get any of that stuff to work super well. Oftentimes I find myself literally having to just basically recreate the project from scratch because random dependency had its version bumped. So I have to remake the entire project, reinstall everything, copy paste all of my code over to the new one just to get it to work and build. It's a horrible experience to work with and having a language that doesn't have any of that crap was a really nice experience. And in the language itself too, there were a lot of things that I'd kind of forgotten about that were really nice to use again. One of them is I think that the structs in Golang feel really good. Now, I don't fully remember. I've been kind of out of the Golang world for a while, but I don't remember if these were popular or not. But when I came back, I know at the time I really liked them and I still really like them. This syntax here where we can tell our struct that, hey, this ID field, when it's coming out of or into a database field uh, format, it's going to be an ID that matches to the SQLX package, which we're using for our database. And then when we need it to go in or out of JSON, it'll be a lowercase ID. The fact that we can just specify these right here and then whenever we want to use these structs down here like in this um like in this pokemon resolver i needed to go through here define my pokemon which is just a slice of pokemon and then in here when i do my db.select i can just pass in the reference to my pokemon and because we have those fields on there it knows how to take this info in here it knows how to take this id put it into that struct and then when i return it down here it'll know how to convert that to json and then send it to graphql and let graphql do its magic and also the database experience was really good too the SQL X package, which is like kind of, it's a light wrapper on top of the base database SQL package feels like to me like one of the best ways to work with databases I've used. I still think Drizzle in TypeScript world is probably my favorite just because it's type safe SQL. It's great. Um, but here being able to just go in and write my raw SQL queries, but have the ability to just auto pass in this reference to the slice and get that passed in properly without having to go through and manually do that, which would be another like 10 lines of code or something is a really nice thing to have. Another thing I'd forgotten too, is that just like Golang is really simple and easy to write it. Like it really is. I mean, when you get into like the concurrency model and you're playing around with crazy go routines and doing weird stuff there, it can get kind of crazy, but when you're just doing basic stuff, it's really not that bad. It's a little verbose, which I'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, it's just really easy going through and writing. This was not hard. I mean, obviously I had to look stuff up cause I didn't remember a lot of the syntax, but like as far as actually understanding what's going on in the general syntax, it just makes a lot of sense. It was pretty easy to put together. And one of the things that I'd stressed about in the past, and this was actually one of the pieces that really kind of burnt me out on Golang towards the end there was I was really stressed about trying to figure out like the most optimal and proper way to structure and put together Go projects. I'd see so many things of all these different ways of doing it, like domain driven design stuff. And then the, all these crazy things where they would set up, um, they would set up these crazy folder patterns and these crazy like groupings of all their different things to get it to work optimally or whatever. And here I just kind of was like, nope, we're not dealing with all that. I'm just throwing everything in a main.go. And obviously in a real world project, you would want to split this out. But I think if I were doing it today, I don't think I would stress myself out with all that stuff. And I just kind of do it the simple intuitive way for me. I know that doesn't scale super well, but for me, it was made the language infinitely more pleasant to work with without having to just stress about where do I put my database queries. And the experience of just working with those packages was also great because in here I had my little database directory. I needed to be able to create a new connection to my database, have some stuff in here to like grab the database URL from my .env, all that stuff. 
it just kind of works and I can go into my main.go and then I just type db.new connection it'll automatically import it for me everything just works right out of the box it's super clean and easy to work with it's just it is a nice experience to work with just such a crisp and clean language again I did really really like that but the thing that I found working on this again and this is again this is very heavily opinionated don't use this to inform your heavy deep technical decisions or whatever this is just a guy on the internet's opinion but I remembered how verbose and boring I find the language and I know that is a take when we were working on this one at five stacks project we built this in a lot of different things one of the ones that I worked on I built a lot of the Phoenix live view one that we did in that video and that was way more fun to work on just because it was kind of cooler what we were doing we were doing really cool stuff with like WebSocket connections to do like live state updates and a bunch of cool stuff there in the Next.js project, I didn't write that one, Theo did, but like the stuff he was showing me, the crazy stuff he was doing with the use cache, all the weird cool stuff you can do in modern Next.js, it was just fun. I was like, holy crap, this is really cool. And I wanted to play with it and I wanted to do it. Versus here, yeah, I was just like, it, like, it worked, it was great, but it was just, boring it was just like writing a dedicated back end in a clean simple way that just kind of worked and i know that like should be a selling point but for me personally with what i'm doing and where i am i like the crazy fun complex stuff i know that's not ideal but where i am i enjoy that really kind of crazy cool stuff that you can do with these other frameworks and tools versus this is just very much like it's great for writing these dedicated back ends but it's just not that cool another thing i did find too that i had kind of forgotten about is like just the Golang syntax does just feel kind of verbose to me and just a little bit annoying. I know that if error not equal to nil is kind of a meme, although there is a very good reason for it. The fact that you do actually have to handle errors in Golang world is probably a good thing. I, in the JavaScript world, I'm going to be honest, the way it typically ends up happening is we just don't. I mean, you just kind of like you run your database queries in like a load function or in a server action or something like that. And then it's just, if it explodes, it explodes. And it's on a serverless environment, the Lambda crashes, and then a new one spins up. We return a 500, which will then go to the nearest error boundary. And then we tell the user to refresh the page. That's kind of about as deep as it often goes, unless you're like in some super high-end, like enterprise type thing where you're really doing it right. But oftentimes when you're just kind of building TypeScript projects, that's what it turns into. I don't exactly know how to wrap this up and clean this up and really crystallize this. I'm thinking back on like everything I've said here. Like the thesis is really sounding like hearing it might he, like hearing myself say it. It really is just sounding like I don't like having to deal with like actually writing correct error handling and stuff like that. I just kind of want to like put it in a lambda and run it and just screw around and have fun with it, which is probably not a good take. But it's also like kind of true. Like the next JS one is way more unhinged. It's towers and towers of absurd abstraction doing wild random stuff. Like with the caching stuff he was doing, like fetching from the API and then caching, caching that forever on Vercel and then just fetching from that and then uh, and then just fetching from that and then storing all the votes in a KV and then using cookies to store the next pair and all that stuff. It was insanely cool, really dope, but also like this is probably more responsible. But like, I don't like responsible these days. I want to screw around and have fun with it. So maybe that's my thesis. Although, ugh, I don't know. I think my biggest takeaway from this is that, yeah, Golang is a good language. It's clean, it's simple, it's easy to use, it solves the problem, it has a good build system, it's got good, pretty good types, the database story is pretty good, the hosting story is great. It's just kind of good, but it's just kind of boring. And these days, I like the crazier stuff. I had way more fun writing the full live view server. I had way more fun screwing around and Theo showing me the stuff on the Next.js thing and playing with that. It's just kind of where my head is right now. If I need to build some super robust, clean, nice backend type thing, Golang is a great place to do it. I am not a fan of the HTMX way. This is also a thing too that I probably should have mentioned earlier that like I've been doing a lot of like full stack stuff because most of the stuff I'm building, I want to have like a front end UI typically. So if I was gonna do that, I would have to then separate out a Golang backend and have my like SvelteKit front end or something or I would have to go like the HTMX route, and I do not like HTMX, I'm sorry, I just don't. <laughs> I would much rather use something like SvelteKit or Next or whatever. That means that Golang would really just be relegated to being like a database wrapper type thing where I just have like an API that I would interact with on my SvelteKit app, and that just wouldn't feel good. I mean, it's just, I ran into this way back when. It just ends up like doubling the amount of code I have to write, and it's way more work when like I can just kind of do it in the SvelteKit world, 
or in the next world and it's good enough. And that's kind of just where I am. It's just not for me these days. I see the point, I see the promise and Golang, yeah, it is a great language.